We consider the moments in life that have had enough impact to help define the person we are today as the most valuable advices anyone can either share or even receive. And even more so when those are the words of our equine industry's most successful professionals. Probably from when I was six or seven years old, I was just fascinated with horses. The main thing with Boyd is that it is all about the horse. It's, it, it's not, the horse is never trying to do something bad on purpose. It's something that we're doing to the horse that the horse is objecting to. So the horse always comes first. And that's the most important thing that I've, under, I've learned from Boyd, that it is all about the horse and learning to work with the horse. The horse doesn't learn to work with us. And uh, my parents didn't have horses. And uh, there was a trotting farm with standard bred trotters at the end of the road. And I used to go up to the fence line and climb in with them. And as they'd come towards me, I'd jump back over the fence the other side again. So I wasn't really from a horse family at all. But every birthday, I used to want to go trail riding. So my whole family would have to go for a birthday trail riding day. And uh, so that was pretty consistent. So it was really in my blood from the very beginning. My mother thought she'd introduced me to a friend, another school teacher's husband, and uh, put me off horses. That didn't work. It just got me more involved. And they were carriage horses. And I remember I sort of wanted to do pony club and jumping and all that sort of thing. And I was devastated for a day or two that I was doing carriage horses. But even then, my love for the horses uh, was completely absorbed, so I didn't even notice the carriages after a few days. All I loved was working with horses. Um, so that was from when I was sort of eight years old. That ran right through till I, I stayed in Australia till I was 21, competing in Australia. And then I always wondered how well I could fare in uh, the European circuit. I'd actually travelled on a round-the-world ticket for my 21st birthday present, and when my mum said to me, would you like that, or would you like a 21st birthday party? I said, no, a round-the-world ticket for sure. So uh, off to America I went. I went to Gladstone, New Jersey, to the World uh, Pair Championships then. Spent six months, nine months in America, in Chicago, and then, uh, then went to England, into Europe. Worked with a team driver for one summer, learned how to sort of compete a European team and how to have them ready for the for the season and then I branched out on my own. And in 1998 I then um, had my own sort of team of horses that I competed in the Rome World Equestrian Games um, and had some great moments to that weekend. Not a consistent performance but there was definitely light at the end of the tunnel and really I've just built from there. So I stayed in England for 25 years and recently we've just moved to Holland a little bit closer to Europe, I was doing a lot of travelling and sort of made sense to be based. So my family, my wife and my two children relocated a few years ago. And um, we haven't really looked back. We enjoy where we live. We still go back in January to holiday in Australia. But um, as far as my driving career, I mean, it's a great place to live, great place to operate. We're one hour from Arken, we're one hour from Big Bergen, we're one hour from Riesenbeck. Don Eshingham, all the big shows were just a few hours away, so it really like made the sport more pleasurable, much less travelling, rather than two days to get somewhere. Yeah, um, Boyd literally eats, breathes, sleeps um, 24 hours of this horse business. And um, the other day I was coming in to work the team, and he said, you know, Misty, there's one horse that we just haven't found the right bit for. And he said, Misty, I had a dream last night about the kind of bit we should use on him. And I just looked at him and I said, you, you dreamt about that? And he said, yeah, I did. And we tried the bit and uh, it worked. <laughs> it worked. But, you know, he, he is just so consumed with his horsemanship and his horses. I mean, that they come first. Obviously, family comes first, but horses are right up there. Never really. I've never sort of doubted or, or hesitated with what I've done or thought about changing tactics. You know, I had quite a bad accident in 2006. I broke my ankle, my tibula, my lower leg, three places in the femur, smashed my hip out. And even then, I just was only concerned about how to uh, recover and get back driving as quick as possible. 
always seems to be in a World of Question Games year in 2000, and that was 2006, and 2010 in Kentucky, I broke my hand, and then this year, 2018, for uh, try on, I've broken my ankle. So every year it's a wag. I, I almost need to wrap myself up and come on, I don't know what it is, but it's a bit of a tragedy that I keep um, burdening my wife with all the sort of injuries that she has to get me through. But I don't look back, I don't, it doesn't make me hesitate. You know, um, in the two and a half, three week period, I drove Arkan with a broken ankle. That wasn't pleasurable, but we still managed to get a, a second place by half a point. So, you know, I'm, it, it's not in my psyche to, in fact, the more you knock me down, the more I'll fight back harder. Driving a team of horses is more than just being a competitor. You have to sort of be able to buy horses well. And the horses that you don't buy well or don't suit your team, you have to be able to sell them. So you have to be able to sell horses well. On top of that, you have to be able to train young horses and produce them to be in the team. You then have to be a good competitor, you know, to do well, to survive. You then have to be a good uh, orchestrator of uh, people because you need a large team of people to help you with five horses, three carriages, trucks and trailers and rigs and caravans. So that's another big side to it there. So you, I tend, we go to Arkin with like 10 to 12 people in, the, in our group. Um, and then on top of that, you have to be able to afford the sport. So you have to be very good at communicating with your sponsors or working very hard with what you do. So there's sort of five or six attributes that you need to survive to be a team driver, a successful team driver. And um, it's one of the reasons, you know, we have a lot of newcomers coming to the sport and a couple of years they get a bit burnt out. The, the, but the ones actually, they're missing a few qualities. The ones that survive it well actually go on um, to great things.